Guess who's back? Back again. Bam Bam's back. Tell a friend. There we go. There we go. There we go. We're back, baby. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. I know. I know. I know. And I want to apologize, first of all, to every person who follows this channel. And it's because I've been swamped with responsibilities on my professional um, environment. And I have not been able to sit down in front of this computer and being able to give you guys the news. I've been anxious to come back and record. Every time I said, I'm going to actually make a recording today. Guess what? Something occurs. I've had commitments with my kids, taking them to games, being on the professional part, doing some um, professional labor. As you know, um, this is not my main uh, uh, location. This is just for fun. However, my fun is to bring you guys the news, bring you guys and let you guys know exactly what's going on in Europe. And I do want to give you a little bit because what's happened since I've been gone, it's that the league has gone on, right? Um, one of the things that we've been doing is, is actually we saw that there was a baseball classic going on for all the baseball lovers. And I know, as you see right now, Puerto Rico is part of the league. And it was one of the favorites to win the baseball classic. However, Mexico did surprise us this year. And, and eliminated us in the in the quarterfinals. Um, nothing. Having that said, one of the things actually that has occurred is that the FIFA um, International has come back after the World Cup. Most of the players went back and played for the national country. We did see how Messi was actually honored by the CONCACAF. So, I mean, for the common ball, I'm sorry. Uh, CONCACAF is actually in the Caribbean and North America part. Um it was very interesting. So football has come back. Football has been enjoying it back. And we're about to start. And let's start with the results, tables, and a little bit about information about what's going on in Europe football. So let's start this. Welcome everybody and here we go and this is Football Con Bamban and I wanted to give you guys a little bit more about the fixtures that has been going on that went on this weekend, how the results, one of the things, how the leagues look because right now we have three of the other leagues actually very hot, very hot, very hot and of course we can say that all in all three leagues and we're talking about the Italian Premier and La Liga, the leaders are absolutely solid right now and on their position and we talked about Barcelona leading La Liga by 12 points to over Real Madrid. Arsenal is actually eight points over Manchester City. And we saw Napoli's, um, I, I, I promise me about what, 16 points above uh, Lazio. So we see right now the three leagues, we can already know that in, in a couple of weeks, we could probably already be solidifying and making champions of the leagues. But what's going on? I want to give you a little bit about what went on this weekend. And we'll start with the Italian league. And the Italian league, we'll start with Atalanta, which is actually in the sixth position right now. They did one, um, they did win the game three to one against uh Cremonense. And then we get to see Inter Milan actually lost against the Fiorentina. And and that's a big loss for Inter Milan because they actually fell back to the fifth position. That's actually putting them outside of Champions League for next year. And that's very dangerous for them because this is a position that they did not want to find themselves at this point of, of, uh, of the season. After that, we have to say that Juventus, being a way that they actually relegated them to deduct 15 points. I don't want to say relegate from the first division because that didn't happen. They got deducted 15 points because of all the, the, the rumors that went on and, and some of the evidence that they did, that pe they got penalized for 15 points. However, they've getting getting back and they're only about six points from making Champions League right now. So, you know, it's very interesting. They're in a fight. They're actually very motivated. They went on right now and they beat the Hella Verna. And they actually tied against Inter today in the Cup of Italy. So that's another interesting story from Juventus. Juventus keep putting pressure and does not um, miss a beat pretty much after they've been falling down because they fell down to 12th position, but they found themselves in the seventh position right now in La Liga, the, the Italia Calcio, the Calcio League. Um, 
one of the things that is going on really good and really positive in the Italian league is Roma. The Rome um, for Mourinho has been very powerful and these, they're winning the games that they have to win. And they actually won this weekend against Sampdoria um, three to nil. And, and this put actually the Roma in fourth place. They're actually in the borderline in Champions League. They, they were the reason why Inter de Milan was down and they're actually two points they're tied with inter de milan but because of the goal difference and 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 the average they have right now the upper hands of the tiebreaker and they're in the fourth place right now um another game that is very interesting is the napoli being that is the first place of the of the league fell four nil against the ac milan ac milan now is in third place with 51 points um, they're 20 points behind um, Napoli. Napoli could care less about that, about that victory for, for, for Milan. However, this is a booster of morale for AC Milan. They're doing a fantastic job. They're keeping the, their options to be in, in, in Europe on Champions League next year. And they're competing. So Atalanta being right now on the Confederation Cup, Inter Milan being on, on European um, and the Euro League next year. And right now, as of today, Napoli, Lazio, Milan, and Roma are the first are the top four in La Liga, um, Liga Calcio. Now, on things that are actually uh, going on, it's that La Lazio actually beat the Monza 2-0. So that's having to wrap up about what happened in, in Italian League. Let's go with the Premier League because there's a lot of stuff that is occurring in Premier League. And what it is, is two of the coaches have been um fired and there's one coach that is right there in the borderline and there's not only them there's a lot more but two of them has officially been um fired from the teams one of them is being um graham potter from from chelsea and the other one was actually brandon rogers from Leicester. but we'll talk a little bit more about how chelsea is looking to move because chelsea has an important meeting coming in in the quarterfinals of the Champions League, and they're going to be facing Real Madrid, and they're facing it without their main coach. But I will mention who's actually the interim coach for now and who will be rumored to be called to see if they can actually be the next coach for the Chelsea League. So having said that, let's start a little bit about what's going on in, in the Premier League. And we know that Arsenal this weekend actually went very strong. They, they, they actually came in and beat um, four to one against the lead United, uh, lead United because of this loss went down to the um, 13th position lead at one point, as we discussed, if you've been following this channel, been following premier league, you know, that it was in the top four at one point, they were competing to be in the high mid table and they have fell apart a little, little by little, but Arsenal did not forgive them. And Gabriel de Jesus came back. Boom. No problem. He did his job. Arsenal's looking strong. They're looking like they're going to be that Premier League or they want to raise up that championship this year. And fans are starting to believe it, my people. Now, one, one team that is actually continuous on the good pattern, even though they're below by eight points, is actually Manchester City. They played against the Liverpool and they beat Liverpool 4-1. to one. What does this represent for Liverpool? Because Liverpool right now, it's in eighth position on the league on the on the Premier League. They're actually they're actually outside of every competition. They're not far away. They're only about seven points from from the fifth position and fourth position for Europe. However, it's been uphill for them. It's steep, um, and and it's not looking good for them. And one of the coaches that I was just mentioning that is in the borderline, the rumors are starting to spread, and there's already questions coming to him or approaching him is actually Jurgen Klopp. And Jurgen Klopp has been asked already: Is he fears his job um, going to be compromised after all this about the bad year that Liverpool is having right now? So Jurgen Klopp is not worried, according to what he says. He's not worried if he actually gets uh, fired. I don't think that's what he wants, um, but he knows that if he gets fired, he's not going to lack of opportunities to go to another team. So Jurgen Klopp right now, it's not looking good for them um, on the Premier League. I don't know if they'll be able to recover to make any um, tournament in Europe. They should be able to, to make back if they get their pieces back together and connected as they should, but they did not look good this weekend. So it's not a good look for Liverpool. But 
we'll continue to go on. One one team that actually um also did not look good, and that's why it cost is actually Chelsea. Chelsea is looking at the eleventh place in the Premier League. Chelsea, we know that Chelsea has spent about five hundred million pounds this um between this the the winter and the summer um trading windows. And it's been amazing for them to see themselves how much they've struggled. They've kept alive in the Champions League. They're going against Real Madrid next week on the first uh, leg of the of the quarterfinals. They're not looking in a positive note because right now, Potter Graham, which we didn't understand because remember the story. Quick, quick summary about the story that has gone on with Chelsea. Chelsea started with Thomas Tuchel um, as a coach. He got fired and got sacked. Immediately, um, Potter Graham got stolen from Brighton, which Brighton, we know that Brighton was actually in the, the, the top candidates. Brighton still maintains himself in the sixth position. However, however, this was not well looked. So there's a lot of fans seeing that Potter Graham went to Chelsea, but for some reason did not connect. This team did never connected with him. They did not look good. And right now they're in uh, in in the eleventh position. They just came from a defeat of two 0 against Aston Villa. Aston Villa, being a team that is actually in the seventh position now, is doing better than them. But it's not a team that is doing that great, or was not expected to be because of the millions of pounds that they've been spending on Chelsea with all these new integrations. Uh, you know, Enzo Fernandez, Fofana. You know, I, I could continue mentioning a lot of names for Chelsea. However. Um, Bruno Saltal is actually the interim coach for this club. They're expecting and they're interviewing and there's big rumors that there's four major candidates that Chelsea is interested in talking to them. I'm not sure if one of them would actually uh, will want to, to, to take over Chelsea. However, they're the rumors and one of the solid names or the principal names is actually uh, Luis Enrique. We know that Luis Enrique just came from you know, ending his contract with the national team of Spain. And he's coached already Barcelona. He's won leagues um, with Barcelona. And he is a great candidate to probably uh, manage this type of environment of superstars. We know how he already had Barcelona, as I mentioned to you before. And that already solidified him as a coach who's eligible to control or eligible to work with high pressure um, team. Another coach that is rumored is actually Sinadin Sidan, but you know, the resume of Sinadin Sidan, it, it's, it doesn't lack. He's, you know, three champions um, in a row side, uh, having, you know, managed Real Madrid, always been a good, uh, peaceful um, trainer. We know how he wanted it, uh, to be the, the national team of France uh, coach. He was actually um, played by by the French uh, presidency and the federation, and they mocked him and everything. Talked about that who Sidan like like you know downplaying a, a legend from them, which is very foul play. However, we've seen Sidan turn down so much opportunities to go back to coaching, and and we're not sure if if he's if this is what he wants to actually go to Chelsea and turn it around. But it could be a big challenge. However, we know that a presence like Sidan will be a coach that can be able to manage these superstars and and uh, and this type of environment of high profile on a team. Um, another coach that is sounding is Pochettino. We know that Pochettino has been um, pretty much almost a year without coaching after PSG. And, and there's strong rumors that Pochettino is one of the candidates also to probably um, be considered for Real Madrid if Carlo Ancelotti leaves from Real Madrid, but we'll talk a little bit about that later. However, this is an opportunity. There's rumors that, that Chelsea is also interested in interviewing him, making a, a point of view to see if he's interested to coach um, Chelsea. The last but not least is um, Nagelsmann, which we know that Bayern de Munich just sacked him not too long ago. And, you know, foul play on their side by players and everything that cost him his, his job in Bayern de Munich. And he's an eligible coach also and well-known that is a coach who's been able to manage, you know, top prospects and will be able to uh, do a great job to manage Chelsea. Now, those are the rumors to be in, in there. You know, what I, what can I say right now about the Premier League? Premier League right now, the top four contenders who are participating currently as of today um, for Champions League is actually Arsenal with 72 points. 
Man City with 64, Newcastle with 50 points, and Tottenham with 50 points and the fourth position. We have Manchester United 50 points, which I did not mention that Newcastle actually beat Manchester um, United uh, 2-0. Given this, uh, Newcastle the third position and, and downgrading Manchester United to the fifth position, taking them outside of Champions League. Um, environment for now. Brighton is actually in the sixth position with 46, and then Aston Villa and Liverpool between 44 and 43 points. So that's actually the Premier League. This is what's going on in these last couple of weeks. It's not going to be the last two coaches that have been fired. We're going to continue to see news as the season goes on, and I would not be surprised. This is actually marking records on coaches being um, fired at this stage in, in the Premier League for their history. So it's very interesting, and we'll continue to, to notify about things that are going inside uh, with the Premier League eventually as they go on. Now let's talk a little bit about La Liga, because La Liga is interesting. La Liga right now, Real Madrid just lost to Barcelona in his last match uh, in a Clásico against La Liga, 2-1. Uh, to one. This was a game that, you know, Barcelona and, and Real Madrid, Real Madrid got you know, uh, disallowed of a goal that could have given them the lead with 2-1 and probably would have changed the outcome of this game. However, Casilla came in in the last minute and made a goal um, to be able to provide the extra three points that Barcelona needed to almost solidify and pretty much a foot and a half to become the Liga champion this year. So that's good news for for um, uh, Barcelona, doing the Barcelona right now. It's doing a phenomenal job. Sabi, you know, well, they invested 300 million uh, euros this year in this league. Um, they needed to win something. So they started the year beating Real Madrid in the final of the of the Super Cup of, of Spain. That gave them a big boost of morale, thinking after being six years um, or six matches, uh, not been able to beat Real Madrid, they finally got a victory on Real Madrid, and especially in a final, which is something that Real Madrid did not know for so long, for over 20 years. Um, so that was a big accomplishment for Xavi and their team. Coming inside, they meet again on the away game for the quarterfinals in the Cup of Kings, and Real Madrid dominated the game completely, you know, possession-wise, 85%. Did everything right in that moment. Barcelona, the, the few, very few times that they actually put a little bit of pressure. Ramajit did it on a mistake between Camavinga losing a ball and then Militao doing an auto goal. Giving them right now the lead currently, you know, and tomorrow is actually going to be the Clásico, the away game. I mean, the, the return game for the semifinal um, double-legged game of a Clásico where Barcelona is winning 1-0 and they're going to be playing and, and come now. So we'll talk a little bit of details about that game and a little bit. However, I will continue. Then after that, Real Madrid played uh, Barcelona for the league, which gave Barcelona the victory 2-1. to one. And given that from the three matches that they face each other in 2023, Barcelona has out, um, who have beaten Real Madrid and three occasions one of them i'll play them and the other two just did the necessary job to be able to win the game even though real madrid dominated both games and looked superior in both games it just didn't go the real madrid's way on, on either one of those games however this gives a solid position for barcelona 71 points real madrid and 59 points atletico madrid which actually had a victory this weekend is with 54 points in the third position very solid real sociedad lost this weekend and had 48 points, and Real Betis did not take advantage of that when they lost to Atletico Madrid. That would have put Atletico, Real Betis in the Champions League contention, pretty much close by, tied with Real Sociedad, but right now they're only three points behind Real Sociedad in the fifth position, and Villarreal, who will face Real Madrid in this next match, is actually 44 points, so it's going to be very interesting in this point. Um, it's it's going to be completely interesting in this game. Uh, Bilbao we just saw Bilbao lose on the semifinal of the Cup of Kings today. Osasuna, actually, they were, Osasuna won the first game on the away game, and Osasuna won nil by a fortunate play from them uh, and a bad day for Atletico Bilbao. Atletic Bilbao actually came in their house in San Mamés, had the game, um, made a, a score in a minute 33, and Yaki Williams made a score, put the game Bilbao, Propose, 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 propose. Dominated the game. They went to overtime. And in the minute 115, you know, uh, Pablo Ibañez actually comes in with a fantastic goal, um, scoring it and giving Osasuna the first 
or the second time that they actually make it to the final in the Cup of Kings. So Osasuna is actually right now the first finalist waiting to and waiting for tomorrow's game between Real Madrid and Barcelona. So it's going to be very interesting in here because Real Madrid and Barcelona is going to be matching tomorrow. They're going to match up. It's going to be a very interesting jet match. Um, Real Madrid is coming on a great, coming from a great game and a great performance. Finally, having healthy 99% of their, their, their squad. We did see that even Hazard, who's overweight right now and, and had opportunities on this weekend, made four participation, actually involved in the four attacks that, that were key attacks for Real Madrid at the end of the game and assisting for, for the goal that Lucas Vázquez actually went in. But Karim Benzema, that's the story of the line. Karim Benzema and the sweetness that he had after the rest of not participating with the international, having that rest of the two weeks, coming back from, from you know, tough matches uh, against uh, Liverpool on the, on the eighth of a round in the Champions League, and then coming from these tough loss against uh, Barcelona and a big exhausted um, time, he rested, and what he rested to, he came with a hat-trick this weekend. So Real Madrid actually won 6-0 against um, Valladolid this weekend, making it... Very normal, very good environment, and very, um, you know, uh, expectations for tomorrow's match against the Clásico against Barcelona. Now, we have a Barcelona who had an additional day of, um, of resting because they had a play on Saturday, and they played against the number 20 um, team in the league, which was Elche, and Barcelona did their job. They started the first half, nil-nil, you know, they're holding back. Everybody was talking about, like, you know, Barcelona's a little worrying, is not doing his job, a little bit. Then came Barcelona, woke up, Lewandowski makes some goals, and and the team actually won the game 4-0, giving them a great sensation. However, they did lose Frankie de Jong and Christensen um, for this next match. They also have Pedri and Dembele outside um, for this match. Real Madrid on the last Clásico brought in Ferlan Mendy in the last couple of minutes, looked horrible, looked out of condition, and got hurt once again. So Falamendi is not going to be eligible for the uh, Clásico tomorrow on the, on the semifinal for the Cup of Kings. And Antonio Rudiguel could not play against Rayo, uh, Valladolid, Real Valladolid this past weekend because right in the warm-up, felt a little bit of pain in his knee, had some ice in his knee, was a little concerning. The test actually showed nothing um, when they did it early on Monday. And today, actually, uh, Antonio Rudiguel practiced normally with Real Madrid and Carlo Ancelotti said on the, on the prior to the game that Rudiger will be eligible to play tomorrow on the center back. However, I don't know if, if Real Madrid is actually going to include Rudiger to start. We will have David Alaba, who's coming back from all his injuries and looked pretty good in the um, Real Valladolid game. Um, so Rudiger most likely will cover that left wing um, defensive uh, instead of uh, Felamendi, which we know he's hurt. But we know also that Carlo Ancelotti could use Eduardo Camavinga in that position and have David Alaba as a center back. However, I think the 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 pair that it might occur will be Nacho Fernandez and, and Militao. But I will make another video just to analyze what is my 11 that I think is going to actually occur on this game. What can I say about this game? This is an important game. This is an elimination game. This is a cup that is in the middle of it. So Real Madrid, Barcelona, it can't get better than that. A Barcelona only needs to win the game or tie the game to, to pass to the final. Real Madrid needs to be to win this game at least 1-0 to make it for extra time and probably penalty kicks. If they win it by two goals, they actually pass to the next round. So it's going to be an interesting game. We already know the Clásicos are always challenging, always, you know, massive. So we will stay attuned and, and this is going to be an interesting. But, you know, I want to take an opportunity to thank you guys. Whoever stayed into the end, I want to thank you because you're supporting always this channel. Hit that like button, subscribe button if you haven't been subscribed yet to this channel. However, I do want to stretch my my thanks to you and for the people who text me and ask me and says, Hector, what's going on with your shows? You need to go on. I've been very heavily involved with my professional life in this moment. Um, but I promise you guys, I will make as much videos as possible. Keep you guys updated with the European, what's going on, especially this long stretch that is going to be very interesting. There's tons of rumors about, you know, in La Liga with Barcelona buying out the, the second in command with the with the rep. This is going to be an ongoing story. And this is like in all the major, um, major media 
I've just stayed away a little bit from those type of gossips outside. It's not a gossip, but you know, uh, those type of news outside of the league, I, I've, I've tried to stay away from them unless you tell me that you want to actually listen about the stories and details about it, because I'm always up to date on everything that is going on in that point. However, this is something that, that I want to continue to discuss with you guys. Let me know an advice to see exactly if there's any information that I'm, that I'm missing in this moment that you would like to learn that you would like for me to continue to follow. You know, I wanted to tell you guys, you know, Italian league, premier league and Spanish league are ongoing. They're going strong. I will promise that maybe for next time, I'll probably bring the, the German league around here also as well, because we know that after the, the coach change, Bayern the Munich look extremely solid and it's it's going to be interesting completely to see and find out exactly how it's going. And Xavi Alonso also with Bayer Leverkusen is doing an outstanding job um, in the German league also. So we'll continue to follow that. In the French league, if I wanted to mention something a little bit, Messi is almost about to leave um, Paris Saint-Germain. He's been booed. He's been whistled. You know how Paris Saint-Germain got eliminated from Champions League also. So it's not looking good for them right now. They've lost a couple games, these last couple games, and it's been it's been a very rough road for them. But, you know, it's it's a league. If you want to learn a little bit about that also as well, just keep me moving. Let me know in your comments, and I'll follow up with it. Anyways, I want to say to you guys, everybody, thank you so much for being here. Until next time. Ciao.